Well, week six, all eyes were in Miami. The Finns were back to their old tricks, highlighted by quarterback Tua Tungabalo and Raheem Moster in the backfield, helping the Dolphins come from behind to a 42-21 win over the Panthers. Tua just stuffed in the stat sheet, finished with 262 through the air and three tutties. Meanwhile, Moster showing the run game is still in motion despite Devon Achan on the shelf for a little bit. But they weren't the only ones clicking in fantasy over the weekend, of course. In week six, Amon Ross St. Brown, 12 receptions for a buck 24 and one touchdown. Then Travis Kelsey, of course, got it done a little bit early than others. Nine receptions, same amount of yards as Brown there, but finished with 21 points when it comes to the tight end position. All right, time to get the fantasy brain trust in here and break all this down. What we saw, of course, in week six on a Sunday and early a little bit. Jamie Eisenberg and Heath Cummins to break all that down. And Jamie, I want to start with you and your winners. I think you're staying somewhere in MIA. Uh, yes, uh, Raheem Mostert is certainly a, uh, a definite winner, as you alluded to, no Devon Achan. But uh, let's give Jared Goff some props for going out on the road for the first time this season and having a big fantasy game, an amazing fantasy game, over 300 yards passing and two touchdowns against Tampa Bay. So maybe you don't have to worry about where Goff is playing. You're just starting him uh, regardless. Michael Pittman gets a new quarterback for the foreseeable future without Anthony Richardson, although he's played with Gardner Minshew already this season. But to see those two have a strong connection, and we're probably going to see the Colts have to throw a little bit more than we expect because of how the defense that they're going to be facing, especially the Browns, in week number seven, Pittman should be locked and loaded as a number two receiver. And then Dalton Schultz is somebody that I thought would actually struggle uh, in the matchup against the Saints, but this is now three straight games in a row where he's had excellent production. So it stinks that the Texans are on a bye in week seven, but coming off the bye, you should feel great about him. But in terms of Mostert, as you said, no Devon Achan. So we have potentially the number one running back in fantasy for the next three weeks. We'll see what Jeff Wilson does if he's able to get on the field in week seven against the Eagles. It's obviously a tough matchup, but I don't think anybody is shying away from Mostert right now. There's certainly a sell high win for a 31-year-old guy that's going to get Achan back in the next four weeks after the next three games. But the way that he's performing and what this Dolphins offense looks like right now, you should just be thrilled to have most of it on your team. And again, for the next three games, he should be wonderful, excellent, fantastic. I can't use enough superlatives to define Raheem Mostert right now. I was thrilled to see Sam Howell come through with three touchdowns in a tough matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. Now in week seven with six teams on a bye, he gets to face the New York Giants. He's going to be a borderline must-start quarterback. Garrett Wilson might just be but must-start rest of season. Forget about Zach Wilson. He's not negatively impacting him. I like Garrett Wilson as a top 15 wide receiver the rest of the way. And I want to give a little bit of love to Evan Ingram. Averaging now 11 fantasy points per game. That's what he scored this week. Still has not scored a touchdown. There's only six tight ends that have scored as many fantasy points per game as Evan Ingram. And he hasn't gotten into the end zone yet. He's one of those tight ends you probably even have to hold through the bye. Speaking of holding through the bye, Chuba Hubbard came through with 88 rushing yards, got into the end zone. He's going on a bye now. It's really, really rare, especially the weeks that we have six teams on a bye, that we tell you you should hold a running back, a backup running back through their bye. You need to hold Chuba Hubbard through the bye. He might not be a backup running back rest of the season. A lot of those guys you're talking about, both of you guys, that we got to wait until they're after a bye to get those points when it comes to our leagues there. Uh, but Heath, how about those guys that are kind of holding the L after week six? Oh, Damian Pierce has just taken L after L. It's like that gif where the guy's just throwing L's at him. And, and this week it was even worse because Devin Singletary played better than him. And so I, I like, I don't, nobody's cutting Damian Pierce. That's the worst part about it. You've just got to hold him. Kind of the same thing with DeAndre Hopkins. You've just got to hold him, but his quarterback's on crutches and didn't look that good when he was upright. Cole Komet completely let us down, but he's one of those tight ends averaging 11 fantasy points per game. If Justin Fields is okay, I'm probably going to stick with Cole Komet. The big loser, Kirk Cousins, his first first game without Justin Jefferson. And I thought personally, you know, it's the Bears defense. Kirk Cousins will be okay. Jo Jordan Addison will be a fine number one. TJ Hawkins is a great second option. The Vikings offense looked miserable. And I know they didn't have to throw that much because the Bears didn't score that much, but still 31 pass attempts. That was not the production that I expected from Kirk Cousins. I'm no longer certain that Cousins is going to be a must start quarterback without Jefferson. You want to talk about bad quarterback performances. I was expecting Matthew Stafford to continue my hot streak for the start of the week, and he should have had two touchdowns. Tyler Higby didn't come down with one. Puka Nakua didn't come down with another one. So if he gotten those two extra touchdowns, it would have been a decent day. And based on how the quarterback play looked in week number six, he would have been a top 10 quarterback. So I'm not going to panic about Matthew Stafford, but just a disappointing performance across the board for what the expectations were, for what the matchup was. And clearly, as you see here, based on the start of the week, I thought it was just going to be another magical day for Stafford. So he's going to probably finish his QB 15 based on how these two guys operate tonight 
Uh, so just a disappointing performance for him. But I'm still going to go back to him this week. I think we're going to see a shootout between him and the Steelers. The Steelers secondary, not very good. So don't panic about Matthew Stafford. He still has two great wide receivers. And as you see, Puga Nakua on this list also. Uh, again, had he caught that touchdown, we wouldn't have been panicked so much. So I wouldn't run away from him. Uh, he had one great game with Cooper Cup so far on the field, one disappointing game. But really, it was, I think, a lot of the just the fact that Kyron Williams was amazing in the second half and just dominating on the ground. Uh, James Cook is somebody we really have to worry about because it's a lot of empty stat lines right now. The work in the passing game is sort of cratered. He did get you a touchdown in week four, but has now gone five of six games without finding the end zone. And I think that's frustrating right now. So uh, hopefully he starts to perform a little bit better and they start to go back to maybe the Damian Harris injury will open a couple more touches. But Cook is somebody that's still starting this week because of all the teams on a bye, but will probably end up being a flex play for the majority of the season. And then Logan Thomas, my gosh, I thought we were going to get a great tight end performance out of him. The Falcons have been completely miserable against opposing tight ends, but Tom Thomas just did not benefit from all those touchdown passes from St. Howell. Three touchdown passes. You told me Howell's throwing three touchdown passes. I would have thought Thomas might have gotten two of them, but just a, a frustrating day for Thomas. He'll bounce back against the Giants though in week seven. By the way, I listened to Heath last week and picked up Logan Thomas, and clearly that didn't pan out for me in my tight end position. But of course, we go back to everything out there, which is the waiver wire. Uh, Jamie, who should we target? Who are you looking at this week? Brandon, it's a big injury at the running back position, and we're going to keep an eye on, uh, obviously, Christian McCaffrey. Now, you got some tough situations here because it's a Monday night game, so we're not going to find out really McCaffrey's status in full until we get to maybe Thursday or Friday. So you're going to have to be a little bit of play a little bit of a guessing game, whether it's going to be Jordan Mason, who was the immediate backup in the last couple of games, even this week when Elijah Mitchell was healthy, or is it going to be Elijah Mitchell, who's been the fill-in for McCaffrey for the last year plus? I'm going to lean toward Mason, so I'm going to put him first, but you should probably put in claims for both those guys. And then we go to Detroit, where you got not only David Montgomery leaving the game against Tampa Bay, we don't know the status of Jameer Gibbs. So if Gibbs is back, clearly he'll be the lead guy. If both guys are out, though, Gibbs and Montgomery, Craig Reynolds will be the starter. Now, it's a tough matchup against Baltimore, so take that into consideration. But uh, again, with six teams on a bye and all the injuries, if you're finding a starting running back on the team, he's probably going to be a number two running back or a flex fee this week. So the 49ers guys and Craig Reynolds are going to be very popular for fantasy managers this week. A lot of young wide receivers on this list that I am excited about. We saw Josh Downs get into the end zone. Fantastic route on that touchdown as well. It wasn't the performance I was hoping for from Gardner Minshew, but I do think you're going to see maybe 40 pass attempts per game. Downs is going to be a boom bust number three wide receiver. I like him a lot. Love the involvement on Thursday night from Rasheed Rice. He should be on, rostered in more than half of leagues. And then Wandale Robinson. Like I don't know if it's actually better for him if Daniel Jones comes back or not, but he is emerging as the clear number one wide receiver receiver for the Giants. By the way, we have six teams on the bye week coming up in week seven. But before we get to that, we're not done with week six. We still got Cowboys and Chargers Monday night football. I'm curious, Jamie, where are we looking for those DFS lineups here? There's a lot of ways you can go because I think it's going to be a high scoring affair. Vegas told us that going into the week. And I think based on the storyline, Kellen Moore wants to light up the scoreboard against his former coach. Uh, now that he's the offense coordinator for the Chargers, thankfully Justin Herbert's healthy. So I'm going to play Herbert, but I'm going to go the other side of this and play Cowboy Stack with Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Jake Ferguson, and hope that this is a good game for Quentin Johnson coming off the bye. They start to feature him a little more. But I think we're going to see Dak Prescott maybe have his best game of the season. Uh, CeeDee Lamb's getting a little bit unhappy about his role and the lack of targets, so he's complaining a little bit. There's a squeaky wheel narrative coming for sure. And then Ferguson has quietly had a good season, coming off a bad game last week against the 49ers, but really all the Cowboys were bad against the 49ers. There's a big bounce back potential here for Dallas, and I think we'll see Dak Prescott and company play well. I'm going to go the other way with the Cowboys offense and focus on that rushing attack, but I do want to stack Justin Herbert and Keenan Allen, and Herbert my MVP, and then I'm, I'm looking for three rushing touchdowns, maybe four from the Cowboys against that terrible Chargers rush defense. Tony Pollard, the backup Rico Dattle, and then let's get a reverse to Kevontae Turpin. Maybe he'll return a, touch, a kick for a touchdown or something. Something I hope we do see, because uh, my Cowboys, I'm a little nervous going into tonight, guys, but we'll see how that pans out there, of course, on Monday night. As always, Jamin Heath giving us everything we need on pen and paper, but don't forget, you can catch them on the fantasy football pod there today breaking everything down when it comes to those roster spots hey it's week six but week seven around the corner as i mentioned six teams on a bye so you might want to listen as we head to week seven